What's going on guys? What's going on 27 squad? Welcome back in to another video and today we are going to be talking about the New York Giants chances at winning the NFC East. Now this has become a recent trend, a recent topic amongst football fans and uh, all this and all that because of Good Morning Football's Nate Burleson, former Detroit Lion, former Seattle Seahawks, former wide receiver in the NFL came out and said that he predicts the New York Giants to win the NFC East. So let's take a look at that before we move on forward. Everybody wants to basically crown either the Cowboys or the Eagles, but I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to say that the Giants, they win the NFC East. And here's the thing. It's, it's kind of like when your trainer hands you those those two-pound uh, barbells and you're just you're, you're sitting there trying to lift it, the little dumbbells, excuse me, and you're sitting there lifting it. And the more that you lift, you realize, oh, I'm getting a little burn. Oh, yeah, this is working. So, yeah, they got a new coach, Joe Judge. He's no nonsense. Oh, and Jason Garrett, I forgot they brought him in as the offensive coordinator. He's going to help try to do some things with that running game, kind of like he did with DeMarco Murray and Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, he showed some bright spots. He's going to take care of the ball because they shored up that offensive line with okay. that fourth overall pick. And then, not to mention the wide receivers. <laughs> the wide receivers are going to help. You have Golden Tate healthy, Sterling Shepard, Everett Ingram. You have all these individuals that are going to finally help this team. And here's the thing. I know Giants fans over the last couple years are like, are we going to be good? One day, Sunday. But I think coming up this season, it's going to be Sunday fun day mm. i got the giants winning the nfc east so that is the clip that nate burleson uh said i believe it was on sunday obviously sunday fun day and i like that shirt because i think it was meant for the giants it was in that giants font and it had that underline like what the giant symbol has on their alternative logo but i do like what nate burleson said now it's all about the situation it's all about potential and how that works out in my opinion the Giants has uh, just enough chances as the Philadelphia Eagles or the Ca Dallas Cowboys if we take the right opportunities the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys are obviously the highest um, likely to win the NFC East Dallas is probably favored because of that you know obviously their team is still one of the best um, starting 22s in the uh, NFC East. I know the Philadelphia people say all this about the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think so. I think the Dallas Cowboys have the best starting 22. Yes, the defense is lacking, but as far as offensively goes, I mean, they're, they're just a powerhouse offensively. I'm not too big on Philadelphia. You don't even know if Carson Wentz is going to survive this season, um, even though I do like Carson Wentz a lot better than Dak Prescott. But I definitely see about probably 10 wins uh, or maybe even minimum nine wins coming from Dallas. 10 wins is more realistic. And then you look at Philly, they're probably looking at nine wins as well. The Giants really need to get at nine wins. I know a lot of people are saying, well, the, and the winner of the NFC East is going to have eight wins. No, that's not very true. I know that's like the Giants hate in us, but we have to be realistic here. The Dallas Cowboys are, are still an above average team, which is above 500, above eight and eight. And so are the Philadelphia Eagles. They're probably one game, maybe two games above 500, but I still think they are above average in the NFL. So let's take a look at the Giants more in depth. What do the Giants need to do to win the NFC East? Now, they did make obvious upgrades to the offensive line, addressing that offensive line with same, assigning Cam Fleming in free agency and picking up three offensive linemen in the draft in Andrew Thomas, Matt Peart, and Shane Lemieux at different respective positions. And all of them can wind up starting. All those drafted guys can wind up starting at some point in this season. All the scenarios need to line up in the right order and at the right time for that to happen but it definitely can happen uh you look at these the hires of jason garrett and joe judge uh, also the offensive line coach in uh, mark colombo um and a bunch of other coaches that I, we don't really need to get to mention right now but a, a lot of them really seem to be an upgrade to what we've seen in the past couple of years for the New York Giants and especially Jason Garrett in my opinion I think his philosophy is exactly what the Giants have been looking for for a number of years now but never really could get to that point now with Saquon Barkley now with a much stronger offensive line probably the best offensive line we've had in our, since our uh, 2007 Super Bowl days 
Um, this this may have potential to be a top 10 offense in the NFL next year, paired along, you know, with, with Daniel Jones, paired along with Saquon Barkley and the wide receiving coordinates. Nate, Nate Broson did not mention Darius Slayton. He mentioned Evan Ingram. He mentioned Sterling Shepard. He's mentioned Golden Tate. But the X factor is Darius Slayton. If Darius Slayton can reach over a thousand yards this season, the Giants definitely have a chance to make the playoffs. Being that Golden Tate is a capable thousand yard receiver and Sterling Shepard. If you get Darius Slayton to break out, sky's the limit for this offense, as well as Saquon Barkley. Obviously, I think he's going to succeed in this offense under Jason Garrett and Mark Colombo's offensive line. And I think Andrew Thomas is going to be great no matter where you put him at left and right. Uh, whichever you know side of the line he goes on, that's a debate for another video. Uh, then Shane Lemieux, if he, he, if he starts, he's a monster in the run game. And Matt Pear is an athletic tackle as well. Now, the biggest key to the Giants making the playoffs or even winning the division the biggest key would have to be the defense. I'm not worried about the offense one bit. We just spent time talking about the offense. I think everybody can pretty much get excited about what is to come for this offense in this season. And I, we don't even need to go back into it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. But the defense is really the part that makes our hearts sink. Uh, that, that gut feeling in our stomach that just is gut-wrenching is the defense. The defense is all about potential. We are all basing our thoughts. We're all basing this team's success based on the defense's potential. Now, last year, we've had a lot of guys and we actually thought our defense were gonna be was going to be a lot better last year with uh, the young talent we provided. Uh, well, the young talent the Giants provided with the young edge rushers. We have a couple of linebackers as well, secondary players, three young secondary players. Uh, and then we traded for Jabril Peppers. We thought this defense was going to be fantastic. But it's one of the youngest defenses in the NFL, and it was one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Hopefully, Patrick Graham uh, it would is going to succeed this all this defense and make it a lot better than it is. But I don't see the Giants making the playoffs or even making a playoff run to contend for the seventh seed without that defense playing a lot better than it's, than it has in the past couple of years. And I'm talking, it has to get back to those 2016 days and maybe even better because in 2016, we still allowed a, uh, allowed a lot of yards um, in the passing game. It was the rushing yards and the sacks we were able to get with Olivier Vernon and JPP that really helped us. So looking at the defense, it's, gonna, it's very hit or miss. I don't think this defense is really going to make that push this year with all the young guys that we have, a new coaching uh, coaching staff in the defense and a new scheme as well. It's a hybrid 3-4-4-3 scheme. Now it may be the majority a 3-4 scheme, but either way, I, you're going to see a lot of different looks and a lot of those hybrid schemes are going to be very, very complicated for different uh, players especially the edge rushers um, and especially the, the the defensive line the linebackers the front seven in general are probably going to struggle and that's pretty much where the youngest guys are all these guys are on rookie contracts Dalvin Tomlinson well Leonard Williams is not but Dalvin Tomlinson Dexter Lawrence BJ Hill O'Shane Zimenez Lorenzo Carter a lot of these guys man maybe guys I've even I've even left out but uh, all these guys are on rookie contracts and they all have potential. You look at this defense, they all have potential. But the thing is, can they produce is the biggest question. Patrick Graham, the defensive coordinator, has a lot to prove. He has proved nothing yet in the NFL. He is a linebackers coach a couple of years ago with Green Bay. Green Bay is not known for their linebacking core. You go and then you 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 fast forward to Miami last year. Miami had one of the worst statistical defenses in the NFL last year. So Patrick Graham, you know, Joe Judge speaks highly of him, but Patrick Graham really needs to produce with that defense and get that young defense producing to their potential. And that's the only way I see the Giants making the playoffs in 2020. So in my opinion, I think the Giants are still going to be third in the division, right behind the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. And we'll be ahead of the Washington Redskins, pretty much just how all things are in the NFC East for the past couple of years. It's really been Dallas and Philly to contend for the NFC East, but it's pretty much been the same for the Giants and the Redskins. But that's just my opinion. What about yours? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Leave a like if you guys enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new. I'll see you guys in the next video.